Sorry, I killed the previous video too quickly. Um, this, is, this is also a very important picture over here. That you can have exactly the same vector. Look at, look at these three diagrams. Just look at the vector A. A, A, A. They're identical. However, in each of these three diagrams, the perpendicular axes that you decompose into is different. Here you've got your X and Y, kind of what we're used to. But here, the X is pointing at an angle from the original X, and the Y is perpendicular. Do you see the, the new X and the new Y? And here we have an, another new X and new Y that's been shifted. It's been rotated. Okay, so do you see the three different axes? Now, if you break up this, if you decompose this vector, it's exactly the same vector. But you can decompose it into these different axes. So here, simply, you just do the exact same thing in each of those three. You drop a, a line parallel to the one axis until it cuts this axis. And there is your AX. You drop a line parallel to this axis until it cuts the other one. There's your AY. Whereas in this one, you, have to, you do the same thing. You drop a line perpendicular and parallel to that, and you get your AX there, you get your AY there. And here, the AX is now actually acting along that, uh, the, the A vector. So the point is here, look here. Um, here's your A vector. You have a certain component of the A vector which is along this axis. What you can see is now, the closer that this axis moves toward, the, ac the closer that this x-axis moves towards this vector, the greater the component of this axis is along, uh, the, the greater the component of A is along this axis. It keeps moving until it aligns. Now all of A is there, and none of A is along the, this y-axis. So you can see, if you choose different axes, you can, you're going to end up with different components along the two perpendicular axes.